Welcome to Electron Line, and here's our next problem where we're trying to work with a system that's under equilibrium. With other words, nothing is moving, nothing is accelerating, which means that the sum of the forces on any point here on the system have to add up to zero. The question is, what is the resultant force at the edge of the beam here? Well, there are three forces that we can tell are acting on this edge of the beam. It's the cable here that's under tension. 150 pounds of force, there's the force over here, that's a 200 pound force, and a force in this direction, a 100 pound force. So what is the resultant force? Well, it's simply the vectorial sum of these three forces. Notice that relative to this point at the edge of the beam, the cable is pulling on the beam in this direction. So, what we need to do now is find the x and y components of each of the forces, which requires us to find the angles of the various forces the horizontal and vertical angles relative to the point right there at the edge of the beam. So let's find this angle right here. Let's call this here uh, tension 1, which is equal to 150 pounds. We'll label them with numbers, and so this becomes theta 1. Let's label this tension 2, and let's label this tension 3. It doesn't matter which order you label them in. You still need the angles. Let's find this angle right here, that would be equal to theta sub 3. And let's find out the angle right here, which let's call this theta sub 2. So of course, the angles can be found as follows. Theta sub 1 is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Now, that's always a good thing to do, to write down opposite and adjacent, so then you can go find out what those are equal to. So this would become equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side to this angle would be 120 centimeters and the adjacent side of centimeters would be the same as this would be 80 centimeters right there and so it's the ratio of 120 over 80 let's take the arctangent of that so 12 divided by 8 arctangent is equal to 56.3 degrees all right next we we'll find theta sub 2 that's equal to the arctangent of the opposite over the adjacent which is equal to the arctangent of, whoop, there we go. And so for angle two, the adjacent, oh, the opposite side would be this side, that would be five, a ratio of five to the adjacent side, which would be 12. So that's simply a ratio of five to 12. And so that angle, five divided by 12, take the arctangent of that, that gives us 22.6 degrees. So 22.6 degrees. And finally, theta sub 3 is equal to the arctangent of the opposite over the adjacent, which is equal to the arctangent of, so relative to this angle, the um, opposite side would be this side right here, that's equal to 4. Adjacent side would be equal to 3, so that's a ratio of 4 to 3. So 4 divided by 3, whoop, 4 divided by 3, Take the arctangent of that, that's 53.1 degrees. So now that we've found the three angles, what we need to do now is find the two components of each of the three forces. So let me get a different color. Let's try green, see if this works. And so what we need to do now is find the horizontal and vertical components of each of the two forces. So we need to find this component right here. We need to find this component right there. So this component would be the hypotenuse, 200 pounds times the adjacent side of the angle times the cosine because the j would be cosine the cosine of theta sub 2 and this right here would be 200 pounds times the sine of theta sub 2 because that would be the opposite side to the angle theta sub 2. Let me use a different color for the other angle for the other force right here so here we want to find this force and this component right there. So this component would be 100 pounds times D, that would be the adjacent side to the angle, that's the cosine of theta sub three. And then here would be 100 pounds times the sine of theta sub three, because we're dealing with theta sub three here. And then a third color, let's use this color right here. We want to find the components of this force. So here we have this force in this direction. So that would be 150 pounds. And notice that we have this angle right here that makes it the opposite side to the angle. So that would be the sine of theta sub 1. And then we have this component in this direction. That would be 150 pounds times the, 
and that would be the adjacent side of the angle, so it would be the cosine of theta sub 1. All right, now plug in the numbers, let's see what we get. So this would be equal to 200 pounds times the cosine of theta sub 2, and theta sub 2 is 22.6 degrees. And this here would be 200 pounds times the sine of theta 2, so this is equal to 200 pounds times the sine of 22.6 degrees. Over here, I probably want to keep using the same color, otherwise it's going to get very messy here. So this would be equal to 100 pounds times the sine of theta sub 3, which is 53.1 degrees. And over here, this would be 100 pounds times the cosine of theta sub 3, which is 53.1 degrees. So we get some readings on that. Okay. And then finally, for the cable, 150 pounds times the sine of theta sub 1, and theta sub 1 would be 56.3 degrees. And over here, that would be equal to 150 pounds times the cosine of theta sub 1, which is 56, oh, 56, 56.3 degrees. All right, so now let's go ahead and calculate what these are. So 56.3 degrees, take the sine of that, and multiply times 150, and we get 124.8. So this would be 124.8 pounds. And over here, we get 56.3, take the cosine of that, times 150, and we get 83.2. So this is equal to 83.2 pounds. All right, green pen. 22.6, take the cosine of that, and multiply times 200. And that gives us 184.6, 184.6 pounds. And for this component right here, 22.6, take the sine of that, times 200 pounds, and that is 76.9. All right, now back to the blue color. For those two components, 53.1, take the sine of that, that's 0.8 times 100, that's 80 pounds. And for this component uh, right here, so that's 53.1, take the cosine of that, that's 0 0.6 times 100 pounds, which is 60 pounds. So now we found all the X and Y components of the three forces. Now we can add them because we know whenever something is in equilibrium, that the sum of all the forces in the x-direction adds up to zero, and the sum of all the forces in the y-direction add up to zero. So, sum of the forces in the x-direction is equal to zero, which is equal to, let's add up all the forces. So we have this component right here, which is in the positive direction, so that's 184.6 pounds in the positive x-direction, Okay, now we have this component, which is in the negative direction. That would be 60 pounds, but it's in the negative direction. So that would be minus 60.0 pounds in the negative x direction. And then we have the component of the cable, which is 83.2 pounds in this direction. So minus 83.2 pounds in the x direction. And so when we add all that up, we get the following. We get 184.6 minus 60, minus 83.2, and that gives us a net force in the x-direction of 41.4 pounds in the x-direction. It's positive because this is bigger than those two. All right, so it's in the positive direction. Now we set up all the y components together. The sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero is equal to, all right, we have this component right here, which is 76.9 pounds, but it's a negative direction, it's downward, so minus 76.9 pounds in the, oop, that would be the y direction, wouldn't it? In the y direction. The second component is 80 pounds, again, it's in the negative direction, minus 80 pounds in the y direction. And finally, we have this component right here, which is in the positive direction, that'd be a plus 124 pounds, plus 124 pounds, 
5.8 pounds in the y direction. So when we add all those components together, we get 124.8 minus 76.9 minus 80 equals minus 32.1 pounds, minus 32.1 pounds in the y direction. All right, so what does this look like? Using a purple pen, you can see that the x component would be to the right. So the component would be to the right. That would be f um, in the y direction. Oh, oops, sorry. That's the x direction, isn't it? In the x direction is equal to 41.4 pounds, like so. And the component in the y direction would be minus 32.1 pounds. So f in the y direction is equal to minus 32.1 pounds. The y direction like that. So those are the two components of the resultant force. Okay, I need one more color. Let's use orange. So the net force would be in this direction. That would be F total or F resultant. And of course that would be 41.4 pounds in the X direction minus 32.1 pounds in the Y direction. So that's our final force. That's of course in vectorial format. If you want to know the magnitude of that force, you can say that F, the magnitude, is equal to the resultant, is equal to the square root of the X component squared plus the Y component squared, which is equal to the square root of 41.4 squared plus a minus 32.1 squared. So it's not equal to. So that will give us the magnitude of the final force, 41.4 squared plus... 32.1 squared and we get 52.4 so this is equal to 52.4 pounds which is the magnitude of the resultant force if we now want to find the direction of that force relative to the uh, horizontal and vertical axis so let's say that we want to find this angle right there that's the reference angle with respect to the positive x-axis we can say that the angle is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side, which is the y component, divided by the adjacent side, which is the x component. So that's equal to the arc tangent of the force in the y direction, which is 32.1, divided by the force in the x direction, which is 41.4. And you say, well, why didn't you use a negative 31.1? Well, it doesn't really matter. All I need to know is find the magnitude of this angle. And I know that it's in the negative direction relative to the x-axis, but we just call it an angle. It's an angle relative between the final force and the x-axis. So 32.1 divided by 41.4, take the arctangent of that, we get an angle of 37.8 degrees. So what we can say is that the final force or the resultant force is equal to 52.4 pounds and is directed at an angle of 37.8 degrees below the positive x-axis. And that is the resultant force on the end of the beam caused by these three forces acting on it. And that's how it's done.